Maridon is better than ever in the Pokemon TCG. Although Maridon EX was released back in March, its full potential has just now been realized by the competitive community. At this year's World Championships, Andrew Mahone and Seijin Park were both able to place in the top 32 with Maridon EX Flaffy decks. This sparked a new interest in the Maridon archetype, and shortly after, Jesse Parker placed second at Pittsburgh Regionals with the deck, while the 3000 player Champions League Yokohama event was championed by a similar version of Maridon Flaffy, but with some new unreleased cards. Those previously unreleased cards are now available in Scarlet and Violet 151, and today I'll be sharing my new deck list for Maride on Flaffy, as well as gameplay with the deck on Pokemon TCG Live. If you enjoyed today's video, remember to subscribe for more Pokemon TCG content. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do so by using code CELIO5 at pokacollect.com for a wide selection of sealed products, pre-orders for new releases, and unique mystery box items. Use code CELIO at PotonStore.com when shopping for Pokemon TCG Live code cards, and use my affiliate links for Dragon Shield sleeves, my favorite sleeves to use, and Into the AM apparel for comfortable and passionate clothing. The Maridon EX Flaffy deck really benefits from the release of Scarlet and Violet 151 because we're going to toss in the two best cards from the set, Zapdos EX and Mew EX. Zapdos EX has the multi-shot lightning attack which deals 120 damage to the active and 90 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon that already has damage on it. This is incredible for the deck because bench damage was something Maridon Flaffy was previously incapable of. This will allow for impactful turns in which the Maridon player can knock out two Pokemon at the same time. This should be especially impactful against Lost Zone decks which typically give this deck a hard time. Since Zapdos' attack needs an opponent's benched Pokemon to be damaged already, we have one Hawlucha from Scarlet and Violet for its flying entry ability, which places a damage counter on two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. And of course, even better than Zapdos EX is the brand new Mew EX. Mew EX has everything we could ever want. Free retreat, an ability that draws cards, and an incredible attack. The Genome Hacking Attack costs 3 colorless energy and allows you to copy an attack from the opponent's active Pokemon. This is super good against opposing Pokemon with really big attacks, like Giratina V-Star or Charizard EX. Here is the full decklist and I'll leave it exported in the description below as well. Now let's hop into some gameplay with the deck. Okay, so in game one, we are going second, and the opponent opens up a Radiant Greninja, starting off with Concealed Cards, Away of Lightning Energy, Battle Pass, here we'll see what they're playing, probably a Lost Zone deck, since they uh, discarded the Lightning Energy, now playing a Battle Pass, I'd assume we'll see some Cum Phase come down here. Uh, my hand's actually really good, Nest Ball, Ultra Ball, Fire Seal Stone, Free Retreat, Mew EX in the active, the Free Retreat on Mew just gets a lot of value. Um, in this deck because previously some lists were playing the flying Pikachu V for free retreat Now we have this Mew with a really good ability and a really good attack and also has the free retreat for us Over to my first turn top deck the Raikou V that's pretty good um, We already have the fire seal stone in our hand that can go down onto a Raikou V or to a, Ra uh, a Raichu V Starting with the tandem unit to get Mareep and a Maridon. And we'll also get the Zapdos EX down. Bench the Raikou, do a little math here, you know, how much can I draw with Restart from Mew? Or do I just end up going into a Fleet Foot? Ultra Ball can get a Lightning Energy into the discard pile. Uh, which we'll want for the Flaffy next turn, and, you know, every other turn after that when we have Flaffy out. Uh, the restart does not find an electric generator, which is what I would have been looking for, so we'll just go ahead and I Ono oh and look for that electric generator. Still don't find the electric generator, so it's going to have to be a star alchemy to find the electric generator to try to get an attack this turn. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and Ultra Ball to thin the deck a little bit first. Grab that Flaffy back out. And Electric Generator. Actually, I think the... Yeah, that was correct. Because I, I Onoed. Um, 
I Iono'd the Flaffy to the bottom, but then I had a far seal stone for the electric generator, which shuffled up my deck again. So then Ultra Ball for the Flaffy was correct to thin out the deck. Uh, so a pretty good setup here. I have my Mareep down. I have a Bravery Charm on the Zapdos, and the Zapdos can be a really good attacker in the Lost Zone matchups, especially if the opponent doesn't bench a Manaphy. Even if they do bench a Manaphy, maybe at some point we'll get to boss KO that Manaphy. And uh, we also have Mew EX, the genome hacking attack, as an option against their Greninja if they don't have a Manaphy down. So we have two chances or two different options for dealing bench damage and taking multiple knockouts against Lost Zone, which this deck did not have before Pokemon 151 or Scarlet Violet 151. I'm still calling it Pokemon 151 from the Japanese version. But uh, yeah, so essentially Zapdos and Mew, the only two new additions to the deck from this set, they both add uh, multi-knockout turns as a possibility. So the opponent will just spit innocently there, and uh, they do not end up getting a Manaphy down, but it doesn't matter because I don't have bench space for a Holucha, so they didn't need the Manaphy there yet. Uh, the Zapdos EX or the Genome Hacking are both pretty far away from being used, I'd say. Uh, but we can start setting up this Mew EX a little preemptively, and that's kind of how you have to do it, because electric generators cannot attach to Mew EX. Um, so you have to use your Dynamotors, your Raihan, your manual attachments for the Mew EX. And uh, I can just take an easy knockout here on the Cramorant with Raikou, and uh, I have the prize lead 4-6. to six. So it's going pretty well, but... They're going to get up into the 7-ish range or even getting close to 10 range in their loss zone this turn. So uh, this is really where they start doing things. It's important to note that I only bench the one single prizer because uh, if they knock out the Flaffy, then they're still going to have to knock out three double prizers to win the game so i don't want to give them two flaffies or two mareeps or a flaffy and a mareep i want to make sure that if they take that single prize ko and get rid of my flaffy they're not really moving their uh their prize race along but this is a pretty poor position for me because they are going to ko both my rykovi and my flaffy with moonlight shuriken i believe so unfortunately didn't have the Bravery Charm on Raikou because I had to have the Fire Seal Stone on Raikou, and I did not get a Switch Cart last turn to heal it either. So just like that, my opponent is now in the lead at uh, three prize cards to my four. Lots of possible plays here. I'm going to go ahead and tandem unit for a Raikou. And the issue with Mew EX is that it can't KO a Manaphy because it has to copy the attack that's in the active. And so I would just be uh, copying Manaphy's Rain Splash for 20. Uh, so I go ahead and Iono looking for a generator and I do get it. Unfortunately, I had to put my boss's orders to the bottom of the deck. I would have really loved to be able to boss's orders Manaphy and knock it out with Raikou, but I did not have the board to support that. Uh, not going to bench any of these single prizers. Uh, I did mention about not benching two single prizers, but obviously if it's something like a Halucha that's going to create a game-winning play and also not going to lose you the game before you can win it, then you would want to play something like the Halucha to create a Zapdos EX play because Zapdos does need um, damage on your opponent's board to be able to use the additional effect of its attack. So now we're at three to three prizes, and like I said, we've created this position where the opponent knocked out that Flaffy, but they can't actually do anything with that one prize card that they took because I'm not going to bench any more single prizes. Now, very lucky for us, the opponent had a pass there, so it looks like the Iono really affected them. They didn't have a, Cramo, uh, a Cramorant to attack with, 
They don't have Psychic Energy for Sableye. I knocked out their Greninja. So even though they got that really good play with the Greninja, I knocked out some of their draw support by knocking out the Greninja. So Iono plus KO on the Greninja was really strong. So even though that looked like a really good play for them, it put them in a position where they were susceptible to this Iono plus knockout Greninja. And that's exactly what happened, causing them to whiff an attack there. So now I'm back in the lead. Um, and I have, like I said, all double prizers on the board. Zapdos is pretty bulky at 250 if I need to attack with that. They're going to lost mine, but I don't think there's any way for them to set up winning next turn. And so I'm going to always end up winning before they do, essentially. I just have to attack two more times. Here I'm going to tandem unit. Um, I don't think any kind of Echoing Horn plays could lose me the game. Uh, the only way I could lose, I think, is if they ended up playing Kyogre. Uh, but to prevent anything like that from happening, I think the Iono down to three and they have a 17 card deck, one Comfey, no Greninjas, um, that's going to seal the deal. Go ahead and make sure I do that Fleet Foot. And then we could retreat this damaged Raikou, or we could just attack with Lightning Rondo. And there's really nothing that could happen because of leaving the damaged Raikou in the active, because they still have three prize cards remaining. So from here, I just always win next turn. There's Pokestop, it gets them three items, but as I said, um, I'm pretty sure Kyogre is the only way they could win here, which I'm not even sure if they're playing it. Alright, game two, going second again, and this time it looks like it's going to be a mirror match. The opponent is starting off pretty strong, Raikou in the active with a Bravery Charm. Tandem unit for Mareep Mareep and also the Raikou V down on the bench, so pretty solid setup. Um, this turn what I'm going to be looking to do is see if I could maybe boss KO the Raikou V on the bench because the active one has Bravery Charm. So I would like to take a knockout if possible, but it's also possible that I just put damage on the Raikou V while uh, not benching enough Pokemon that their Raikou can knock me back out. So I hit that double energy off the electric generator and that means I'm going to be able to attack with Maridon. So this is an extremely strong turn and you'll notice that I limit my bench so that their Raikos cannot do enough damage to me. So I'm going to Photon Blaster their Maridon. Now they don't have Tandem Unit to refill their bench. They'll have to find another Maridon. Um, take the Mew EX off the prizes. Could be okay, but uh, Maridon and Raikou are typically going to carry this matchup. The, yeah, the Mirror Match, Raikou, and Maridon are very good. But the Bravery Charms, sometimes you'll need like a Raichu V to reach over the 250 or 270 HP. They're going to go ahead and bench a Zapdos EX. That's good to have for the free retreat once they uh, attach an energy to it. And they also want to have more Pokemon on the board so that their Raikos are doing more damage. But my turn one going second was just so perfect. I got to attack with Maridon instead of Raikou. I got to boss up the Maridon instead of their Raikou. So everything went really well. And then they're forced to just attack with Lightning Rondo for 160. Um, not taking a knockout. And in this kind of big, basic, aggressive mirror match, you want to be taking a KO every single turn once the KOs have begun. Um, now, I say that, but I might not be able to take a KO here because my opponent has Raikou in the active with the Bravery Charm. Um, so, but if I limit my bench again, if I don't bench more Pokemon... They're only doing 160 with Raikou, so I could just retreat into this Raikou V and hit their Raikou. Not a knockout, but they also won't be hitting me for a knockout. So I am going to bench the Raichu, and I have Bar Seal Stone, so if I get another Electric Generator hit, I can actually one-shot this Raikou V with Raichu. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes you need the Raichu to... Um, go over the 
250 or 270 HP. But actually, I'm not going to go for the electric generator. I'm just going to go for the safer play, it would seem. No, I have the switch cart dynamoter. So I do have this. Uh, watching it back, it, sometimes it's a little difficult to tell what was going on in my head. But yeah, so I can play out all those cards, draw extra card with Raiko, use... Um, see if I can get electric generator or something else that's useful. Dynamotor secures it. I hadn't realized that I hadn't used the dynamotor yet that turn. Um, oh, and the reason I had to retreat the Maridon was because I needed to get lightning energy into my discard. So now it all makes sense watching it back. So I had to retreat the Maridon, put lightning into the discard, dynamotor it on to my Raichu V. That is why I specifically Fire Seal Stone for the switch cart because it was a guaranteed play instead of hoping for energy off of electric generator which i think was absolutely correct so really good play by me there it's just i recorded this gameplay yesterday and i'm just now recording the voiceover over it so i kind of forgot that kind of thought process that was going on there but it was all definitely correct um, and now i have a two to six prize card lead because i made sure that i started i took a prize card turn one and then i just want to keep taking a prize card every turn after that and i can't lose if i just take two prize knockouts meaningful knockouts on the way of my prize race and uh, i'm pretty sure i can't lose here i have boss and i have energy in my hand so i can just ko anything because i can tandem unit to fill up my bench i can just ko the active it doesn't have the bravery charm and the opponent concedes going second again and it's against a lost zone deck of some sort starting with the reading greninja discarding psychic for concealed cards there's jet energy the comfy into the active so it looks like this is lost zone giratina and my hand is not great but i do have far seal stone and i started with a pokemon v so that'll get me out of this I'm gonna Fleet Foot first before the Forest Seal Stone, see what that gets me. It does get a Zapdos EX. Not what I exactly wanted. Would have loved to see a Maridon from that. Go ahead and use this Electric Generator, but it's only for one energy, so that really stinks. Star Alchemy. Grabbing Squawkabilly EX. Squawkabilly is really good for this situation where I don't want to help my opponent by giving them more cards. And uh, we can still use a supporter after Squawkabilly, which is really great. So Judge, and I was looking for a an electric generator there, but unfortunately we don't get it. So I'm just going to retreat into the Zapdos EX because the Zapdos EX has free retreat. Um, but I could have definitely just considered leaving the Raikou V up there so I can use Fleet Foot again next turn. So I guess I was worried that the Beach Court might get bumped. But even then it's not that big of a deal if it does. Um, but yeah, so in case the Beach Court were to get bumped by like an Artisan or a Path to the Peak... Um, I think I'd rather have the Zapdos EX out in the active because I already have the two energy plus energy from hand and I can attack with it. And if the opponent doesn't bench a Manaphy, I could always go for the Halucha play so I can take two prizes with the Zapdos. So let's see if they are even playing Manaphy and if they decide to bench it. There's the Manaphy. And also a Giratina. And they don't get to Lost Abyss. So um, if they Lost Abyss, I probably would have been able to take a knockout. So it's better for them that they did not Lost Abyss. And um, I needed something to discard with this Ultra Ball, actually. Which is why I uh, got Far Seal Stone instead of Bravery Charm. Because now I can start using this Restart ability to refill my hand a little each turn. Um, it's only three, but three cards is better than none. It gets me a Maridon and two Lightnings, so nothing too great that I really needed there. Uh, but I will be taking a Knockout all the same and see how the opponent can respond. This Mew EX is, or at least it should stand as a very large threat to my opponent. Uh, so they're going to Colrus. That's one turn without bossing my Mew, so that's great. 
Anytime they play a supporter that's not boss, that's huge because they're not bossing up my Mew EX. Uh, like I mentioned in an earlier game, the Mew EX, you can't accelerate energy to it with electric generator. So you do have to preemptively bench it and attach to it sometimes. And you don't really mind preemptively benching the Mew because you get value out of the restart. And if they are to boss up your Mew EX, that means they're not knocking out your Raikou or your Zapdos or your Maridon or even your Flappy. And you do play Super Rod in this list, so... Uh, you can always just super rod the Mew EX back as well. So it looks like they're going to be knocking out my Zapdos EX with Giratina, and that is just fine in my book because uh, we're probably going to be taking the knockout back on them with Lost Impact. It will make us loss in some energies, but I don't care. Uh, yeah, we have Beach Court out still perfect, so we'll send out the Raikou V and uh we have a really strong turn coming up here fleet foot and i get raihan that's not bad i mean it's i don't need the raihan right now but it's an extra card so i can start powering up raichu v to win the game with next turn i could actually just use raichu v as my attacker this turn and then save the mu ex on the bench yeah, so I'm going to get the research for next turn. And I have that Raichu V ready to go. So the thought process is as long as I get an electric generator and I can hit energy off of it, uh, we should be good to go to knock out the next Tina next turn. And that won't win the game on prizes, but if I were to knock out two Tinas, uh, I think I would kind of just win by them being out of attackers. Unless they are able to just set up two more Tinas and also have enough energy. So we'll have to see what they can do here. Because although I did take the first knockout, it was on a single prizer. So if they go down to two prizes here, I'll go down to one. And they will have the opportunity to go from two to zero and win the game. Um, but of course, if they can't, then I can just knock out a single prizer to close out the game. So we'll have to see what their energy is looking like here. And it's just attach to Giratina and pass. That is really, really bad. So I'm going to try to knock out this Giratina this turn with Raichu V. I'm going to attach to Raikou because Raichu V is already one energy away from attacking. And if I don't hit an electric generator, I'm not doing anything substantial anyway. So we're going to go ahead and attach to Raikou because if I whiffed the generator, I could always just attack with Raikou uh, thanks to Flaffy anyway. And I have the Beach Court so I can just send out Raichu or Maridon here. I think it would have been better to send out Maridon. But if I'm just default attacking with Raikou anyway, it doesn't matter what I send out because they all have free retreat with Beach Court. And I'm going to hold on to the electric generator? No? Okay, yeah, I'm going to fleet foot first, see if I hit super rod. I don't hit super rod, and then I will electric generator. So now I have Raichu V with two energy. I have Mew EX on the bench with one energy. Uh, this game should now be sealed since my opponent whiffed the attack last turn. Switch cart into Giratina V star. And they do have the grass energy, and they also have the boss to bring up the Raichu V, but that does not matter because I still have Mew EX. So regardless if they knocked out the Raichu or the Mew, I would be able to KO them with the other one. So kind of a checkmate position here. Uh, the opponent will Star Requiem knock out the Raichu, and now I just need to attach one energy from hand for the Mew EX. So we'll go ahead and look at the deck. There's three energy in there. Um, I'm probably going to hit uh, Fleet Foot and then research and draw most of my deck. And there's the energy. I don't even have to research. So we'll just attach Dynamotor Retreat. And that is going to be Genome Hacking to copy Lost Impact. Mew EX actually took four prizes that game. Huge performance by Mew EX's Genome Hacking in this matchup. 
Well, I've played a ton of games so far with the new version of Maridon EX, which is the deck list here on screen and the deck that I played those games with today. And I think this deck got even better than it already was. And if it wasn't already a tier one deck, it might just be one now. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, the deck has already gotten a lot of really good placements and its recent victory in Japan was with these new 151 cards, the Zapdos and the Mew EX and the new kind of build of the deck. So let me know what you think of Maridon EX right now and also my new deck list for it. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.